Hello, YouTube. Happy belated Thanksgiving to everyone for those who celebrate it. Today, I'm going to go over probably the one and only deal that I found for Black Friday this year, which is a two terabyte SSD for my PlayStation 5. I've actually been looking for this for quite a while now. Of course, I was looking at the Seagate Fire Cuda 530, the Samsung 980 Pro, and the Western Digital Black SN850. Those were my prime choices, but unfortunately there weren't that many deals for those this year. They were discounted, but not as much as I hoped for. So here I have the PNY CS3040 XLR8. I'm assuming that means Accelerate. This is two terabyte. I was able to get this for $229 from B&H. It has slightly slower speeds than the three SSDs that I mentioned prior but it still meets Sony's requirements. It is still generation four. And honestly, there's a lot of videos out there showing that even if you use the faster speed SSDs, it's still capped or limited by the console itself. I'm pairing this with the MHQJRH heatsink. I have no idea what that acronym stands for. It's kind of hilarious, but this is highly recommended. So I went with that for $10. This next section, I'm gonna go over the installation. To be fair, there's a lot of videos on this out there already, so you're free to check those out and you can skip this if needed. Before continuing, I will say that you have to be mindful of ESD, electrostatic discharge, fancy word of saying static electricity. If you don't know what that is, I highly suggest you take this to someone who knows what they're doing. That static electricity can really destroy electronics now that it's winter time and a lot of houses have low humidity. If you decide to continue on, make sure your PS5 has the latest system update. They should all be able to recognize these SSDs, assuming that the proper ones are used. First, I'm gonna disconnect all the cables from my PS5. I have the disc version, but this applies to both the digital as well. You're gonna put it face down, the front of the console facing away from you. I'm gonna grab the upper left and lower right corner. You're gonna lift up to pop it off and slide it slightly to the left. If you're really worried about leaving scratches, I highly suggest you don't drag it to the left. Try to lift straight up if possible and it should just come right out. From there, we're gonna remove the cover plate screw. Then we're gonna remove the standoff with a Phillips screwdriver. If you're the type of person who's really careless, I would cover that fan with some tape. This is what we do with cars, uh, with the intake manifolds and stuff that you don't want falling inside the engine. We're gonna move the standoff to the correct hole. In this case, we're using the 2280 and Sony did a great job marking it here. We're just gonna move that standoff over. We're then going to prepare the heat sink, just taking it out of the packaging, separating the two halves. Yours might look slightly different. This one's a double-sided, so we're gonna apply the sticky pad, the thermal pad to both sides of the SSD and we're gonna re-screw the two halves of the heat sink together. Next, we're going to install the SSD into the slot. You just put it in as a slight angle and push it in. You don't wanna force it. As with computer building, if it doesn't go in, I would look at it again and just take your time. You don't wanna force and break something. Then simply just screw down the screw into the standoff that we removed earlier. And finally, reattach that cover on top. There's pros and cons to using that cover. There's some people that did some testing. If you leave the cover off, you might get better thermal performance. But the trade-off is the OEM system was made to have that cover reattach for negative airflow or something like that. So you might get more dust by leaving it off and dust buildup over time causes thermal problems, so that's the trade-off. Once you pop the cover back on, you should be good to go. Plug the wires back in, start back up the system. It's going to tell you to format it, so if you get that screen, that's a good sign. That means the drive is recognized. They're just gonna tell you some read speeds that they detected, and this menu here just shows the before and after. I installed SSD. You do get some extra menu options. You might want to consider having the system automatically install new PS5 games to the new storage that you install, and that way you free up more system storage for everything else. If you found something useful in this video today, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.